Yeah, I think I'm going to finish the missiles story. Good. Because we, uh, yeah, wanted to. Uh, I've been waiting the... for the fi- for the conclusion, Amy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the final act. Um, I wanted to refresh the memory, and uh, I think uh, I already say that a missile returned to Shanghai, and uh, then opened his own company in the in the this uh, um, high poly chemistry uh, institution, and uh, so he had a couple of um, and patents. He he's a very smart inventor. So anyway, and so he started his company, and also personal life. He met uh, love is his life, a girl, and uh, she was uh, teaching um, French in the Fudan University. Uh, her father also is very, in, uh, very uh, influential and famous uh, scholar in Fudan University, and uh, I think at the early years a graduate from Sorbonne University in Paris. So anyway, and they get married, and then um, they have a, a few years later they have a little boy, and uh, he named him a little Rocky, because he always want to be a Rocky science. So he think uh, his uh, uh, dream will move to his son, and uh, so seems like uh, I heard all about that already in United States, and people told me all about. I think uh, you know. Finally, a missile, uh, I had to put a period on his uh, story, and uh, it's like a Hollywood ending, happy ending. But, you know, uh, life is not a movie. Uh, you just cannot uh, produce your own show anyway. So uh, 1996, um, I found another girl, and I went to the the re-education camp together. And she just lived very close, but we didn't know each other. Uh, we are that close. She lived in uh, Sunnyvale. So I invited her uh, for Christmas. And uh, after dinner, uh, by the fireplace, we're talking about those old memories when we were in the camp. And uh, somehow, and... Uh, and we talk about and the first time we went to working on those rice field. And uh, all of a sudden, they have so many leeches. All of a sudden, with our leg they had four of a leech, about four, five, six, I don't know how many. You know, we don't, because the leech is suck the blood, you know, so you cannot pull them out from your leg. You know, you had to, um, like, a, a padding and push down. And so they will come out. But we don't know anything, so we just pull, and they just go inside more and more. So when we're talking about that, somehow, and the, she started crying. I started crying too, you know. And then all of a sudden she asked me, she said, you know, it's kind of strange. She said, the last year I went to Shanghai, we had a reunion. We talk about the same thing, but then nobody cried. He said, how can... In China, I cannot cry. So, you know, that question just down to me. And uh, I cannot answer right away, you know, because I never thought about that. And then I said, well, I have to think about that. You know, right now, I just cannot answer correctly. Maybe tomorrow morning, you know, I think overnight, and maybe I will give you a better answer. And... So then I would talk about uh, something else. He said, you know, I met uh, uh, everybody, is in, including Missile, and, uh, but he, so, he said uh, so far away from everybody and hardly talked to anybody. I said, something wrong with him? He said, no, I don't know. But I heard that they said that he got divorced or something, and uh, he, uh, he has a little son, he said that. Uh, and also, I'm talking about the girl, His name, her name is uh, Susan. So Susan told me she also got divorced. So um, so she told me, she said, you know, I always admire this guy. He said, uh, maybe you can find out uh, the information, uh, contact information. I can contact with him, uh, correspondence or something. And uh, so I said, well, you, uh, you know, I think he, she probably wanted to date with him or something, but the, she's kind of embarrassed. 
So I said, yeah, I can, I can uh, talk to Hans. Hans is a guy, our head of our household in the re-education camp. He lives in Vancouver. So I said, I can give him a call and then find out his information so you guys can uh, get together and catch up. And that she think that I think it's a good idea. We both think it's a good idea. And so the um, next morning, and I think over about the question he asked him, why in China they get reunion and then nobody, they talk about the same thing, same memories, everything, but nobody ha- get emotional. Why is that? So I think it's over. I think you know why? Because... Uh, we dif- in China, you know, and in, under the communism, and the, our emotion, we always being suppressed. You know, I remember when I coming back to the United States, the few first couple of years or something, I don't even know I get able to cry. So I always ask him, "Where's my tears?" You know, you like become a, no emotions. And then you go back to the place, even though it's different. And we can talk about that, but that still you don't feel like, it. you know, you are free. You you cannot express your feelings. So in the morning, I talked to her. I talked to her, but I said I found the answer, and she said, "Yeah, I think I think overnight, I think I come on this conclusion because now we are in America, so we have." A, you, we just feel free. We can express ourselves free. We don't feel like um, we have to hide our emotions. We don't feel like if we cry, we are being punished. So, you know, that's something, you know. And I went to, back to China a couple of times to uh, the reunion or something. But the, we talk about things, but then nobody gets emotional. So even though they're changing a lot, everything, but there's still this, uh, you know, You've been long, long, long time of being suppressed. You know, they took away in basics, you know, basic feelings of the human being. It's really hard to uh, recover. Some are probably, I don't know, I don't know, maybe never. Right. So let's go get back to the missile story. And so a couple of days, I called the pens. I found that I tried to find the contact information for Susan. And then I think after a couple of weeks, the hands called me back. And they said, that, you know what's happened? A missile disappeared. I said, what? What do you mean? He died or what? No, he said he didn't die. I don't think he did, but the, um, he just disappeared because he has no parents, no brother, sister, and his wife divorced him and took the, the, the boy and to France. So it's nobody. Also, the, the his ex-wife, his family, and parents also, you know, they uh, passed away, and uh, she has no brother, sister, so nobody there. So we just, you know, he just disappeared. We don't know where is he. I said, well, you know, that's something. I said, then he told me, he said, you know, I heard about her, why he got a divorce. I said, no, I didn't know anything about her. He said, uh, um, he started this company. Actually, at the beginning, is very successful. They own the son, and there's a, the state owned the company, and they wanted to, you know, ha- being a partnership with him. And uh, he was very happy, thinking, well, that way, you know, they can have a, a, a more a cash flow, and that so he can do more research projects. And uh, then he didn't know, and uh, eventually. This uh, stay on the company, and they, the his so-called partner stole his uh, patents, and uh, they start another company, and uh, in a uh, different city, and produce the same products. So basically, just uh, and get him out of the business. So he he was uh, raising funds and try to get more money and to dealing with the cash flow problems, but there's no luck. So he under lots of stress. He is, uh, you know, very um, and disturbing. So he started thinking he had to release, uh, you know, his uh, stress or something. So that time, you know, is uh, very popular. They have this uh, called a, a qigong. I don't know 
if you guys heard about it. Qigong is uh, you you generating your qi in your own body, and then those qi can become an, a force to move some uh, an object and remotely. No, we call and it also, meditation exercise. Uh, it, modi- yeah. Meditation yeah. exercise, uh, qi, it's basically it's as a form of energy. Yeah. And uh, so that time was very popular. They show it in the TV everywhere else. So he think uh, maybe Qigong can help him uh, to release uh, his uh, stress. So he found the master, the Qigong master. So the Qigong master said, well, he said that you, if you want to practice Qigong and you had to uh, leave your family, you had to concentrate to generate the Qi, otherwise the Qi going to leak. And uh, so he decided, you know, and the missile is uh, that kind of person. Whatever he does, always so devoted. He just, you know, it's kind of, I would say it's kind of radical thinking. So, you know, anything you want to do, he just uh, do everything, give up everything to do it. So he, he go into the Qigong um, practice. And uh, then uh, he left uh, his family. And uh, his wife had to teach him. And also they have a little boy and to raise so also that time, I think uh, his wife and the uh, parents get very sick. So she had to take care of everything. So she asked him back home. And then he said, I asked the Qigong master, he said that to me, you can't leave. Only have uh, three months in the left, and uh, you can have your qi and uh, restored, and uh, then you can go home. So he didn't go home. And uh, the, I think the, uh, the resolve of that in uh, uh, his wife divorced him. And uh, then the wife and parents passed away in the same time. And uh, then I think uh, I just uh, previously I said that he, her father is a very uh, um, famous scholar in Fudan University, at, you know, and in, in his early years study in, in Paris, Sorbonne University. So he has a friend there as an offer. Um, his daughter, you know, that's uh, Miss O's uh, ex-wife, and position to teaching Chinese in in the university, Sobon, and also can bring the uh, her little boy. And uh, because the her, his wife and the family all wants her, wanted to have a little grandson and to study in Sobon University. And uh, so anyway, so she took the the kid and she divorced him and t- took the kid and the, their boy into Paris. So, and then after that, and uh, he didn't save his company. Also, he lost his family. And uh, so somehow, I think uh, he was, uh, um, something happened to his uh, uh, mental status. And then uh, he just get, really get hit. And uh, so one day he took away all his clothes and uh, just naked to walk in the street. And uh, he said, I don't want anything. I don't have anything like that. And then the uh, police arrest him uh, and put him in the, um, uh, the mental hospital. And uh, then after uh, treatment, uh, they released him. Uh, but somehow uh, he disappeared. And uh, so uh, later, I think after... Uh, and so I told uh, uh, so the uh, hands told me about it. So I said, uh, well, you know, maybe we have uh, some uh, people. We went to the uh, re-education camp together, and uh, they also live in Shanghai. Uh, maybe you know they can find uh, him because he doesn't have a brother sister. We are just like uh, his brother sisters. So there's a couple. And they're very, very nice people. So they said, uh, yeah, they're going to, you know, to find him. So finally, and they found him. Uh, and because he, before he opened the company, he worked for uh, some uh, chemistry institution. And uh, so uh, in China, you know, they had to trace you back to whatever your uh, original work unit they called. And uh, so... I think the mental hospital, because he has no family, and so they send him back to the work unit he used to work that that place. So that company think he has no use now. He is a cuckoo, and so they just uh, uh, cannot use him for anything. So they rent um, 
and uh, one room in the countryside um, somewhere uh, near Shanghai. They threw him out there, and uh, and maybe then the the couple in Shanghai, you know, we went to commute together, and they went they found him uh, through this old work unit. They found him, and he was lay on the floor, and uh, and they had some water probably they put some water there and some uh, dry uh, food and uh, just let him uh, lay down there and probably waiting to die or whatever. Nobody cared about them. So they wanted to rescue him, uh, but uh, they really don't know because they also come back to Shanghai. They couldn't find any job, very poor. So they had no resource, everything. So they told the uh, hands, they said that, you know, we we really wanted to help, but, but uh, we don't have any money. And I saw Hans uh, uh, tell me that. I said, well, you know, we cannot go there to help him. So those this couple, they can, but uh, we had to uh, raise some fun, money and uh, to send it to him and for him to start. And they maybe they were started to working on and uh, and to ask the government and the welfare program to taking care of him, whatever. And uh, so we got so we have five people living in Northern California, uh, Northern America, Canada, and the United States. So we get five hundred dollars each. So we send the twenty five hundred dollar to Shanghai. And at that time, it was uh, quite a bit of money and enough to rent a, a place. For him, uh, and uh, then meanwhile they can looking and uh, apply for the um, government and the well uh, for the disabled people, the wealthy program. So anyway, in the end, and the they just uh, uh, I think he's pretty lucky, and also under the some uh, people we went to the re-education camp together, and uh, they also know some uh, people working the government. Uh, and uh, they also is the uh, uh, kids send down the kid. They come back and they become an uh, official and uh, uh, work in the government. So get him uh, to the uh, mental hospital. They have uh, some uh, rehab, uh, some uh, institution. So they send him uh, there. So finally he have a place to live and uh, and uh, be taken care of relatively, right? And uh, so anyway... After that, I think his uh, uh, ex-wife would come back to visit him sometimes and uh, bring some audio t- tape and his son uh, talking, little uh, Rocky, and talk about how much he missed his father, everything else. But eventually, and uh, uh, I think uh, uh, two years ago I heard, and uh, even that's probably 20 years passing by, I tell you, and then the, uh, they say the, uh, his son, he become a grandfather. His son was get married, married to a French woman, and also uh, have a little kid. You know, so I think, uh, you know, at least, uh, you know, it's not bad endings. And But and the little Rocky and never send the uh, audio anymore because he doesn't speak Chinese anymore. Anyway, also I and uh, his wife said that because uh, he didn't want to visit him because he didn't want his wife know his father was in the mental uh, institute. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so uh, then the last one uh, last year and hence sent me a, a video clip. It was a Shanghai local TV station interview him. And uh, uh, so that clip was uh, kind of, you know, touching. And uh, they asked him, uh, say, you were been here for 20 years now. And uh, so what you you think about back your life, what you are really missing. And uh, so he was silent. And uh, then uh, and the camera just moved on and focused on his face. I can see the pain in his eyes. And his uh, lips were trembling. He said that, you know, family. Mm-hmm. He said that I lost. He said that I'm never able to find back. So it's true, you know. 
and never able to find them back. So anyway, just I a think great that, example of uh, of of what people lost and and it's almost never been noticed by by anybody but them. Yeah. So I think that today I I have no nothing anything more to say. So I had to put the really put the period in his story. Yeah. The end.